This walkthrough will demonstrate how to set up a pure GDK project in Visual Studio. This demonstration will show how to do this in Visual Studio 2008, but the principles will be the same for 2010 as well. These principles can be applied to just about any IDE if you prefer Qt Creator, Dev C++, or something else. Pure GDK is extremely flexible and will work with any standards compliant C++ compiler. Setting up a project is simple, but there are a few important steps required to get everything up and running. Let's get started. The first thing you will have to do is create a new project. To keep things simple and the number of files we'll be working with to a minimum, we won't be using any of the advanced templates which come with Visual Studio. All we'll need for this demonstration is a simple, empty C++ project. You can uncheck the option to create a directory for the solution. Our solution will only contain one project, so an additional directory isn't needed. This template creates three filters in the project, one for header files, resource files, and source files. We'll be creating our own filters, so you can go ahead and delete these. Even though they may look like folders, filters are just a handy way to help you organize your project. They have no relation to the folders on your computer at all. Go ahead and open the project folder by right clicking on your project in the Solution Explorer and choosing Open Folder in Windows Explorer. The next step will be to copy the engine DLL and the export libraries to your project. The files we need are contained in the Pure GDK application data directory. The easiest way to get there is to use the shortcut in the start menu. From there, copy the engine DLL and the C++ dependencies to the clipboard. and paste them into the project directory. To keep the project directory clean, I would suggest creating folders to store your source files. One called source, and the other called include for the project dependencies. In this case, the pure GDK headers and export libraries. We already know that this is for C++, so Rename the dependencies folder to pure GDK so that it's a little more descriptive of its contents. Then move it into the include folder. Inside the folder for the pure GDK C++ dependencies, you'll find a few things. The init pure GDK.h file contains a helper function for initializing pure GDK. The second file, simplewindow.h, isn't actually part of the engine. It contains a few simple functions which handle the basic task of creating and managing a window, similar to the glut for OpenGL. Its purpose is to hide the complexities of Win32 and to help you get your project up and running as quickly as possible. Inside the core folder, you'll see lots and lots of files. These are the headers and source files which map the engine DLL's function exports. You don't need to know what this means right now, only that they're very important. Pure GDK won't function without them. Now let's prepare the project filters for importing the engine files. Create a filter for the source folder and the include folder to mirror the ones we created earlier. We're going to need a place to write code in our project, so let's create a main.cpp file for the project. Remember, filters are not actual folders, so you'll have to specify that this file is to be created in the source directory we made earlier. The next step is to begin importing all of the engine dependencies. 
create some additional filters to map out what's inside the include folder. Then add to it the helper functions and the library export headers and sources. The last part we'll need to do is configure the includes path for the project. By default, the compiler does not search the project directory for any sources we include with angle brackets. Adding includes in this way is advantageous because it means we can avoid using relative paths all over the place. For those who are not using Visual Studio, a single period can be used in place of this Visual Studio macro. That's it. Now let's add some code to test it out. You'll need to include at least pure gdk.h for all of the function exports and init pure gdk.h to help load the engine DLL. Simple window.h is not required, but you will have to know how to set up a replacement with Win32 or a UI toolkit like GLUT or WX widgets. Dark GDK users might be a little confused right now. Where is void dark GDK and loop? GDK. Well, pure GDK doesn't use these. Like a proper library, it allows you to use whatever entry point you want in your application, be it main or win main. This allows you to easily add pure GDK to an existing project without it messing up your previous entry point. Additionally, if you compile with regular int main, You'll get a console window for your standard output commands like printf and cout. You might also be wondering where this open window function is coming from. This is part of the simple window library we imported earlier. Its parameters are very straightforward, x and y positions, width and height, title. One part which might be a little confusing is all of the parts with a ws prefix. This is a little bit of Win32 Voodoo, which specifies the default style for the window, like borders and buttons. You don't really need to know how it works to use this function, but if you do want to know, you can find out by looking them up on MSDN. The DB open screen function is what starts the engine and creates the direct 3D device. Its first parameter identifies the window it will be drawn to. In this case, the window we created previously with the open window function. Once everything is created and initialized, show the window which was previously hidden. It's better to keep it hidden until everything is loaded so that you don't see any flickering as the screen is attached to the window. For this example, let's create and display a simple cube. And create a main loop to sync each frame from the back buffer to the screen. You might also be wondering what this window event function is. 
This is part of the simple window library we imported. It gives us a way of accessing what enters the application's message queue, and in this case, WM close or window message close, which is the close window event that occurs when someone clicks the X button on the window. Now let's compile the project and whoops, looks like I made a typo there. Let's wait for everything to finish compiling. Yeah, I missed a comma there. That's an easy fix. All right, let's try compiling this again. Perfect. If you can see a big cube on a blue background, then you know everything is configured and working properly. But this cube is kind of dull. Let's add some movement to it as well. Some uh, animation. By rotating it along its axes, we can make it spin, 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 and wow, that spins a little too fast. Let's slow it down a bit by adding a frame rate limiter with the db sync rate command. A limit of 60 FPS should be okay. Perfect. We finally got a nice spinning cube in action. Congratulations! If you've made it this far, you now have a complete pure GDK project up and running. This may have been just a simple spinning cube, but there are over a thousand commands available for you to play with, with over more than twice that many if you consider all the plugins that are available as well. I hope you've enjoyed this video demonstration on how to set up a project in PureGDK.